from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for a podcaster that's here to go, take you shopping and uh, pondering shopping. Not a, it's is it a shopping list if it uh, if you if it, post post shopping what could be sleepier than a post shopping shopping list? Oh, I make a uh, shopping list. Uh, no, I make them after I leave the store. Shop, a shopped list. I guess we're doing a shopped list. I'll be going through, uh, pretty sure that's what we're talking about tonight. Like some shopping I did at Trader Joe's and pondering what comes next. Uh, so, or what, like, like what, it, I don't know, some reviews, some re- like recipe ideas and more so it's time for sleep with me the podcast if you're new holy cow welcome to sleep with me it's a podcast to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff so you could fall asleep to be your friend in the deep dark night your companion your boar bud your boar friend so i'm here to you know keep you company and take your mind off of stuff uh, this show is very different so just see how it goes if you're new it takes a couple tries to get used to for most people three tries so see how it goes. What we got coming up. The show is uh, ad supported, free for free. There's over 600 episodes ready to go if you become a regular listener. And that's the way most people listen to the show. And so we got support coming up. Then after the support, the support's only a few minutes. There's a long meandering intro meant to ease you into bedtime. And the intro is kind of, kind of here to help you get to know the podcast better and to ease you into bedtime as you get ready for bed or you wind down. And then there'll be a bedtime story about 20, 25 minutes into the show, uh, like uh, where I talk about grocery shopping. And I mean, holy cow, talk, like you say, well, can't you get straight to the story? I say, really? Do you really want me to get, do you really want me to get to pondering my shop post shop, shop the list? And, you know, mostly I'll be talking, I don't even know what I'll be talking about. Probably lentils, top of my list. I'm just guessing riced cauliflower and lentils. So, I mean, uh, you, like that's a part you could, could sleep to, but I'm here to keep you company too. So I'm glad you're here. It's so fun to be able to do the show, to be honest. I'm so honored. If you're new, I, I really can hope this podcast can help you. So thanks for checking it out. And these sponsors are how we're able to do it for free twice a week. All right, everybody, it's Scooter here. It's time uh, to talk about Sleep With Me Plus, but more to talk about Sleep With Me. Like, you know, Sleep With Me, why does it even exist, right? Because I had found that most sleep audio that was out there, it didn't work for me. And a lot of it made me feel worse, right? Because it reminded me of how it feels in the deep, dark night. And that's where the idea of Sleep With Me came from, was uh, being lonely in the deep, dark night, needing something to take my mind off of what was keeping me awake. Because I was desperate to sleep, but I was more desperate for all the rigmarole around not being able to sleep to stop. And that's why Sleep With Me exists, because I was like, man, doesn't it, does anybody else in the world want something like this? A friend in the deep, dark night to tell them stories, make them giggle, keep them company so they could fall asleep. And you probably heard me talk about Sleep With Me Plus and supporting the show. Like, why does Sleep With Me need support? We're 100% reliant on uh, listener action to support the show, whether it's supporting the sponsors or supporting the podcast directly. There's no outside funding for Sleep With Me. And at this point, it takes over 120 hours a week to make uh, two episodes of Sleep With Me and put them out and and keep in touch and do all the stuff to keep the show going, which is ends up being over 500 hours a month. And in the past, to, you know, I used to do as much of that work uh, as I could myself or cut where I could. And, uh, you know, over the years, we have had the support to slowly delegate. And all that means the sport so show is more sustainable. Like when I was doing it all myself, it just wasn't sustainable. And I think most of the people that rely on Sleep With Me on a regular basis, you want the podcast to be around when, when you need it, right? Uh, you want it to be there, whether you listen twice a week or you listen to 10 episodes a night, you count on the show. And the show counts on 
on you, right? And so if you support the show on Sleep With Me Plus, what do you get? Well, you get uh, to listen the way you want to listen. You know, we've learned over the years, like uh, some people like stories, some people like intros, some people like certain styles of episodes, some people like bonus exclusive content. And Sleep With Me Plus is able to offer all that in a way that's easy to find stuff, easy to use. So if any of that sounds appealing to you, you could sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. That's uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. And you can try out a seven-day free trial if you want. You know, get everything set up and then see what you think. Uh, thanks so much. All right, everybody, Scoots here. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast I need you here. It's where I pop my peas. If you please, I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. Yeah, this part of the podcast is a little bit higher energy uh, than the rest of the show because these are the people who keep the show free for everybody. I'm, I would love to be saying your name here. If you support a sponsor, let them know about it. Let me know about it so I could thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. We haven't heard from anybody in a little while, but I wanted to thank some people who took the time time to support the show and to write up some testimonials about why they support the show on Sleep With Me Plus. So I want to thank Jerry. Uh, Jerry said, I realize all the work that goes into something that always allows me to feel more rested and less stress. And Jerry said, hey, if you're thinking about supporting the show, you're not going to regret giving a little each month uh, for even just one night of sleep, right? So thank you, Jerry, for supporting the show. Everybody else, else out there that supports the show directly or supports the sponsors. We couldn't do it without you. That's why we have the Sleepy Supporter Zone. If you want to be like Jerry, uh, support the show. Or if you support a sponsor, fill out the form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Thank you, Jerry. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. Uh, if you're having a tough time, there's links to resources in our show notes, including international resources you could connect with right now. It's also about being a part of positive change with our actions, uh, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying support Ukraine, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying all these things, but taking action, learning more. There's links to resources we could do that in the show notes. And you could join us. Uh, uh, the things we're supporting right now, Sleep With Me directly, me personally, is the Midnight Mission in Los Angeles. It's a shelter uh, that's there to help people experiencing homelessness. We're supporting the Trevor Project. Uh, you can support the Trevor Project uh, directly as well. And we're supporting Hand in Hand. You know, I first heard about hand in hand from RGB and I've been supporting it and right now is an important time to support an organization looking to move forward. Hand in Hand is Israel's fastest growing integrated social movement. Their work reaches thousands of people every day, proving we can live together as Jews and Arabs, Israelis and Palestinians. And while there's a lot of different ways to support whatever's hurting your heart right now, Hand in Hand is one of those and that's the one we've been supporting and you could learn more uh, about uh, the Midnight Mission, Hand in Hand, or the Trevor Project, and support any of those organizations or support whatever works for you. Uh, but you can see those links right in our show notes. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your moderators. You get support, dear scooter on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud that we could dance. Rusty Biscuit, Lois, and I like banana. Leah does the transcripts. Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget, uh, if you want a free way, you say, well, I, I love the ad supported show, Scoots, but I prefer something without the supporter zone or without that stuff. If you can't afford to support the show directly, you could sign up for our referral program for free, refer people to the free podcast and get access to ad free episodes and story only episodes. That's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash R E F E R. That's refer. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. What do you say? We slow it down and get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing? 
trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep, well, welcome. It's Asleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. And I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever is keeping you awake, uh, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, things on your mind, uh, thoughts uh, about the past, the present, the future, uh, thinking thoughts. Uh, that's what I, thoughts. It could be feelings, uh, feelings related to those thoughts, uh, like uh, f- f- feelings uh, that are there, feelings that are appearing. I mean, they, they, they don't, they kind of, they do make appearances. They say, I wish you'd disappear or dissipate. Uh, but they, how many, how many, I mean, I wonder how many people that are listening. They, I mean, I don't know if I've ever had a feeling that said to da, but that's the sense I get at bedtime. As soon as my head hits a pillow, here's a couple of things about me. Like uh, this, I, 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 I'm, I'm allergic to cats, but I do have some cat-like features. And uh, my dog does this too. So, I mean, I guess they say, you know, eventually you learn from your dog. Isn't that a famous saying? Eventually you learn from your dog. I don't think that is, but for sleep with me, eventually you learn from your dog, who probably learned from a cat. Uh, but when I get in bed, and like then I'm like I'm going to sleep. Like it's time. I'm like okay, I'm ready to fall asleep. But one thing I do is I, I get in this overcomplicated position, positioning my pillows, checking, and then I'm in that p- position for about. Somewhere between 45 seconds and two minutes before my body says, okay, like this is never intentional. I never know I'm doing this. I mean, uh, like I think I'm getting in the position to fall asleep in. I mean, talk about uh, thinking you're in charge of your own life and realizing <laughs> like how little power I have. Uh, but it, between 45 seconds and two minutes, then my body... I mean, my limbic system is really running the show. Who are we kidding here? But then my body says, whoa, 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 no way. This is never going to work. We need to reposition into the proper. So I guess that's the preparatory bedtime position, even though I never knew. It's not like I get in that position and say, oh, boy, can't wait to be in this position for two, two minutes or so. Then I'll be in my proper bedtime position. And then I get in another position and that may not be the final position. Then my limbic system just lets me know how long, how long we're going to do. It never lets me know how long we're going to do this for. It says, uh, ta-da, buckle up for the ride, buddy. Um, but it doesn't say ta-da, but it feels like that. Uh, along with my thoughts, my feelings, my physical sensations, obviously these are some physical things. Uh, this is, oh, no, no, no. Hold the phone. It, like, there used to be a phrase, kids, uh, they used to say, hold the phone. Not exactly sure what it meant. Uh, like, I think it meant your reaction was so strong you wouldn't be able to hold on to your phone. So they say, hold the phone. Uh, or they were going to say something about the person on the line or make an explanation, exclamation. I could, I'm just picturing this is a positive version of hold the phone. Like, okay, back in the old days when I was around, uh, you had a phone that was cord- attached to a wall or attached to a phone hub. They didn't call it that. They called it, it was just the phone. Receiver? I don't know. Headphone? Headset? I don't know. But but so, but okay, I just wanted to explain this thing. Like, but I could say hold the phone if you're like, you got good news and you're doing one of those things where you dance in place and squeal with joy quietly. That's a nice bedtime image. Uh, maybe that's what my limbic system's doing. I always assumed it was um, much more emo, my limbic system. Emo with an edge, though. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's like dancing and squealing. Uh, and it's, just, I can't, it's like, I just can't wait to get to sleep with you. So, so uh, like, uh, I just want to reposition us once again. Anyway, thoughts, feelings, physical sensations, whatever's keeping you awake, I'm here to take your mind off of it and and keep you company so you could fall asleep. I mean, because it could be a ton of different stuff, changes in time, temperature, routine, travel, work schedule, anticipation, getting over something, going through something. And the only reason I list all that stuff is because um, it, uh, like, it's... Uh, 
like I go through it all because I just want you to know you're not alone. Whether you feel alone in the deep, dark night, you feel lonely, or you just feel like nobody gets it. That's always been my experience with people that can sleep, but we love them. But you tell them about it and they just look at you and they say, okay, why don't you try not moving around in bed? You say, were you kidding me? I never, I never would have thought of that. Why don't you try getting in the position you're going to sleep in and then going to sleep? And you say, holy cow, I would have never thought of that idea. Thank you. I mean, I never react like that. You say, okay, great. Uh, uh, how come they don't have that? Like, uh, but, but that probably wouldn't be good for speed dating, huh? I mean, it would clarify things. You say, okay, opposites attract. So obviously uh, we're meant to be together. And they'd say, what do you mean? They'd say, well, I actually have, <laughs> I actually have tried uh, getting in the position I want to fall asleep in before. They say, okay, never mind. Uh, speed to time, time. Luckily, the timer's up before you keep explaining. Uh, but uh, so I don't know if you've ever felt that way in some sense where you say it, people just don't get it. Uh, and I want to, the only reason I bring this up is because there's a lot of people listening right now that know how you feel. They've been through the same things. And I probably can relate to how you feel, even if I haven't been through something similar. Someone who's listening right now has, and they are leaning in right now or snuggling in, but they're like, whatever the version, a sleep podcast version of making positive eye contact with you and smiling is, uh, they're doing it right now for you because they know how you feel. They say, oh yeah, I'm glad you're here. I really hope this podcast can help you. They believe that for you. And I believe that for you. And that goes to the second part of it, which is you deserve a bedtime where you could get some rest. You deserve a bedtime you don't have to dread or that doesn't feel like rigmarole. Or you deserve the rest you need to get through whatever's going on right now. So you could have the rest you need so your life is more manageable. So so what, you know what I mean? It's important. And the goal of the show is, is just to be one part of you getting the rest you need and having the bedtime routine or the bedtime structure you need so you could be out there flourishing. I mean, that's just, we're just one tiny piece in that whole thing, but I hope to be a piece where you're flourishing because that's a world that's better for everybody. Even a world where you're like slightly in a better mood. I know, I mean, for me, I mean, you heard how I talked on that imaginary speed date. Like I wouldn't have been capable of that if I didn't have a decent amount of rest. Uh, I would have either side-eyed, roll-eyed, or been even more, like, uh, it would have been more direct with my, uh, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have been like, oh, thank you so, oh, no, I haven't tried that. Uh, like, uh, and, and then if they don't get it, you just roll with it. You say, okay, no, no, never tried, uh, have you tried getting in bed? Do you sleep in a bed? Uh a bed? Can you tell me more about these bed things? No, I've been trying. I've been trying to stand up. I've been trying to. I, I thought. Uh, I've been trying to do it like those flamingos do it. But it, you know, I tried to tuck my head under one arm, stand on the other leg. It's been terribly my whole life. It's been terribly uncomfortable. I mean, eventually, uh, that would probably be how I deal with it in the past. You see, a bed, a bed. No, no, no. I've been doing it like flamingo. You, you seen a flamingo? I, like. Uh, I'm trying the flamingo solution. By the way, don't try it. Even though I could attribute it, I could probably make a bunch of money going on a speaking circuit and doing appearances, probably a podcast and a project, uh, the flamingo solution, Fl flamingo sleep solution. I mean, I prefer kissing, you know, dipping my elbow. First, also dipping your elbows in milk. That's another imaginary one we came up with. A real one is kissing your shoulders, your biceps, or back your hand, you know, depending, you know, whatever is easiest. Okay. So what do I do with this podcast other than go off topic? I send my voice across the deep, dark night. I use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents, all to take your mind off stuff and keep you company so you could fall asleep. As I said earlier, the podcast does take some getting used to. So give it a few tries. You got nothing to lose. If you already loathe me, most people have already stopped listening and they've sent me some, you know, some of them with some nice, uh, flurred language. Is that a word? But, uh, 
but you don't need to. I have a website. If you already don't like the show and you're like, I'm never going to listen to this again, that's totally cool. You still deserve a good night's sleep. We still know how you feel. Particularly, we probably know how you feel because none of us have, you know, all of us have been grouchy too. So go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. It has other uh, sleepy stuff on there, sleep pod, other sleep podcasts and other sleepy stuff. You, then one of them might work for you. So try that. But for most of you, give it a few tries, see how it goes. Most of the people who have listened to the show for a long time, who support the podcast, uh, they um, the show didn't work for them right away either. But also, once they started on the second or third try, they said, oh, yeah, this is what I've been looking for my whole life. Or, hey, this worked as I got ready for this thing and got through it. So just see how it goes. Uh, this is a, pod, a couple of reasons why. One, this is a podcast you don't really listen to. It's like you kind of barely listen and you can listen, but you don't need to listen. I'm ju- ideally, I'm just engaging enough uh, to keep you company, uh, but not where you got to pay attention to me. So that it's kind of like an out of focus picture. Also, this show is not here to put you to sleep. It's a show to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff. So that you're thinking about whatever I'm talking about. I mean, it'll be cool. Like, if you need to listen to me, we'll go. We'll go through my Trader Joe's shopping list, and imagine, you know, imagine that. Uh, not many people, you know. I mean, you say, do you really need to imagine? It's real, right? Uh, and I say, well, mostly. I, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, mostly real. And uh, so, oh yeah, I'm not here. I'm like the reason the show is over an hour is there's no pressure to fall asleep. I'm here. There's over 601 ad-supported shows you could listen to freely. You could create a playlist. You could listen all night if you need to because there's people who are listening who can't sleep at all, and there's people who are listening who need it, who are having a tough break, and they a tough day, and they need a break, or they listen while they, they're doing work or schoolwork or labor. Um, so the, the, there's no pressure to fall asleep. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar bestie, your neighbor, your boar burr, your boar bee, your boars, your, I, I don't, I don't know, other stuff, boar, boar friend, your boar bestie, your boar bee, your friend in the deep dark night to keep company. Just like if you had a phone and you called somebody and you said, Hey, I'm going to, um, I'm going to need you to barely keep me company. That's what I'm here to do. That's like, I guess, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, what else do you need to know? Structure the show also throws people off. But the show is structured in a very deliberate way, and you can adjust how you listen uh, as you become a regular listener. And there's no wrong way to listen, but uh, the majority of people listen in one way. And then, uh, like, but just like, uh, but that's just like, there's a lot of people who adjust how they listen too. So the show starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Then I probably already go off topic, even though it's supposed to just be a greeting. But that way you feel seen and welcomed in and you get a sense of what the show is like. Then there's support for the show. So paying for it is optional. Most people like to listen to the ad supported show linearly. But that's just most people. It doesn't mean you need to do it that way. So like uh, paying for the show is optional. But and if you prefer an ad supported show, you could do Sleep with Me Plus, or you could refer people to show and get ad free episodes free uh, as you refer people to show. Um, but then there's um, a long meandering intro after that, and we're like whatever fifteen to twenty minutes into that intro, and the intro introduces people to the podcast. It follows a familiar structure, but it's different every time. And it gives you time to wind down, to get ready for bed, or to do some chill activity. It's not really meant to put you to sleep, though it does put a small percentage of people to sleep. Uh, Like, uh, it's just meant to be like a familiar friend, but talking about something new every time. So you can't quite adjust, right? Because at least for me, that's what worked. That's why none of the other stuff ever worked. That's why I started making a sleep podcast. Back in 2013, I said, none of this stuff is uh, like a friend and unpredictable, but in a predictable way. I don't know what I mean, but you know what I mean. If you're new, you don't, but you'll eventually find out. Uh, 
So the intro is is just part of people's bedtime routine. Now, there is, like I said, some people are falling asleep. A lot of people are in bed getting comfortable, but other people are relaxing, like doodling or, or, or the equivalent, stretching, foam rolling, on and on and on, fluffing their pillows. They're in their pre-bed, pre-bed position, pre-sleep position, as I just learned about myself. Is, so that's what the intro does. There is two percentage of pe- people who start the show, uh, like uh, in sub percentages at 20, 20, 20, 25, or 30 minutes. But there's also people that pay just to listen to intro only episodes. And there's people that pay to listen to story only episodes. But again, that's how you could adjust as you become a regular listener. Okay, after that support, then there'll be our bedtime story, a little Trader Joe's uh, shopping coverage. And uh, then there's the thank yous at the end. So that's the structure of the show. That's why I make the show. I'm so glad you're here. A bunch of people work really hard because we yearn and we strive. We really want to help you fall asleep. So thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive. Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody, Scoot's here. Oh, uh, hey, sorry. I was just, I was like, uh, sorry, I didn't realize you were here. I, I was getting ready to record a podcast episode, but uh, never mind. I would rather hang uh, and uh, go over my Trader Joe's receipt with you and talk about it. it's been a little while and i know we changed up how we do these cooking episodes and uh and so yeah we could uh, do this we'll do a little shopping reviewing and talking about uh, cooking i don't know if i remember any of the things well, let me see from the last episode what uh, i remember and then you could let me know what i forgot to review even though i was just listening to it so the cracked pepper or cracked olive salad uh, mixed with lentils. That was really good. And I used a half pack of the pre-cooked steamed lentils and a, and a whole bottle of the, um, cracked, uh, olive salad. That's re- really good. Uh, so that's a really good meal in and of its own. Uh, and, uh, uh, helps me keep my commitment to having like some sort of legume every day. Then the other one, which was, uh, I don't know what it was called, but it was uh, like chickpeas in some sort of seasonings and oil. And that also makes a great side on its own, but then you can mix it. I don't know what I was positing I would mix it with on the episode, but you can mix it with sardines or tuna. And again, another really great meal. I guess you could throw, I don't know if the olive salad mixes, because this is, these ones are already pre-seasoned, so I don't know if you need to do any seasoning with it. Uh, that's a nice thing about these, those two, throwing those two together. So those two combos came out on top. Um, not sure what else. I never got the s'more bars. They, they, left, uh, they left my world. So we'll have to wait till the snacky clusters. I think I already reviewed those. Um, don't have that receipt or anything. Uh, so I'm not sure what else I was looking at cooking, but I know those two things came out really good. Uh, oh, you want to make them right now? Okay. Uh, well, we'll pick them up uh, and then we'll see uh, what while we uh, go through Trader Joe's. So, so let's head over there and uh, let's start going through my list here. Uh, and uh, talk about some thoughts about it. Uh, should we just run through it? I don't know what we should do here. I don't even know what some of these are. What is that one? Uh, okay, well, we got... Uh, so first up, it was ex- expensive, but it was a large jug. I went on the wrong day, I'll be honest with you. And um, and the wrong time of day. It was the only time I could have gone... Well, that's not true. So, I mean, maybe we should talk about this. I mean, you're, you're, you're here to help me. I'm here to help you, right? And sometimes just talking and listening 
uh, you know, in my case, talking on and on and on helps you fall asleep, right? Uh, and you barely listening to me helps me make the show. So maybe that'll work here. So I have a, a little bit of a block and not just when it comes to grocery shopping, which is relatable, right? Um, but, uh, with, uh, um, other things, but we could talk about it with grocery shopping. So, um, you know, you know, with the podcast, I don't work, uh, I work every day basically for the show. Right. And even though I've, you know, I've cut back a bit. So on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, the pressure to work, uh, is, is less, but there's still little things I have to do, you know, like I still have to work a few hours. And it's really not possible to delegate in some of the stuff like the writing. You know, I could miss a day, and I do from time to time, but it just serves everything much better if I do that every day. And the reality of the situation is that I do kind of have to record any time I'm, wor- I'm at home, no matter the day of the week, uh, because during the school week I'm not going to be at home certain days. So, but so, so, I, but I, the days I'm definitely, well, almost definitely home are Sundays, Mondays, um, and, uh, and Fridays, and then Saturdays, uh, and then some Thursdays. I mean, I'm home on Monday or Tuesday and Wednesday, but just not, I'm not working from home, right? And uh, so, um, so, and then every other thir- every th- every Thursday, I switch on driving to school. And just to refresh you, because I know you're sometimes like, so I, where my, where I drive to school is so like, uh, it's actually not physically that far. And it go, when we go to school, it's going against traffic, but in the Bay area, low traffic would be high traffic in a lot of other small, like medium sized cities, even for Syracuse. This summer we were caught in a traffic jam. My brother was driving and he said, Oh boy, this is traffic. Uh, and my daughter and I re- really did have a nice laugh at, uh, uh, that that was traffic. Cause, um, it was like, for us, it was like, that's would be mild situation. So all that being said, what I discovered when my daughter started going to this high school, and it's a cool public school, charter school, and it works for her, is that, so so it takes about uh, 45 minutes to get there when things are moving normally, and... uh, and so, so it's not, not a good use of re, any, any kind of resources for me to drive her to school, come home, then drive back and pick her up. Particularly because like once about 2, 2 p.m. hits, uh, that's when the traffic really does start up. And heading back to school, then you're caught in the regular commute instead of going reverse commute. And so, like, I, I tried to be, I did do, try to be open-minded about this. I said, well, what am I going to do, you know, because, uh, well, I, I tried a couple times doing, like, seeing what it would be like to drive back, but that's like an hour and a half. Uh, that's just not a good use of resources, any resources, uh, the, the, the ones that have impact on the outside world, but also even my time. I don't really have an extra hour and a half in my day. And so for, 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 this was a few years ago now, but when she first started school, we did, um, we worked, like tried, I tried working at a Starbucks for a little while and then I said, okay, let's try out co-working spaces. Uh, and what I discovered is, and this is where I'm, I'm on my second co-working space, uh, is that they're not really conducive to recording the show. Even ones that kind of advertise or you can kind of work with them to record, you can't record a, a podcast there. Um, maybe like a business, not a sleep podcast, I guess is what I'm saying. You could probably record like a business interview podcast uh, or like a roundtable discussion podcast, but not a sleep podcast uh, or probably not a storytelling podcast. And I don't want, you know, you know, you don't, I don't want to bore you with all the details. So, um, uh, well, especially a podcast that's recorded in segments. So, um, I don't, what was my point? I was, I thought I was, I thought I was making a point about grocery shopping. Oh, I was. Okay. So this is getting deep. Holy cow. Talk about a biography. 
unexpected lulling bi- bi- biography moments. Okay, so uh, once upon a time, even before that time where we were all working from home, I worked from home when, uh, and so that was very leisurely because I had five day weekdays where I could record, where I would attempt to record 2.5 episodes of the podcast. Because then if life came up, uh, one week when I could only record one episode of the podcast, those 2.5 episodes, because two episodes have to kind of get over a year. You, if, if the year was going in a normal, you know, you know, some sort of like, what do they call that? Like state where you're, uh, nothing's changing, which I know is not true, but I'm just laying out the law of averages. You would record two episodes every single week. And then about three months later, those episodes would come out after they go through all the post-production work that goes into it. Okay. So, but so then this is the third school year of us where we changed it. So then I started working in these co-working places. I realized, okay, I can't record in these co-working places. I can record bonus content because the bonus content is recorded a little bit differently and it's distributed directly to people who are willing to, to pay for the bonus content. So it's just a different type of recording. Um, but so that changed because of the work schedule and co-parenting and making sure, hey, the, the distribution of labor is, you know, round as equal as we can make it means that, uh, yeah, like uh, I drive half the uh, school days a month and uh, it's easier I don't know, it's just what we decided, but it does make sense because then you're only driving to school once and home from school once. And so having co in place really worked, and then it's it's actually worked really well for everything but the recording. For Even for my own well-being, it has worked really well because uh, when I'm at a co-working place, uh, I'm focused on work, uh, that and not recording or doing chores. Uh, because usually when I'm working from home, since I do work from home most days, uh, I also say, well, it's easier for me to spread my chores out and not do all my chores on the weekend because I'm working, you know. So I use a timer, uh, and I call that my Sunday timer. Holy cow, I thought we were going to talk about Trader Joe's and food, but my Sunday timer is one minute of pause or meditation, then 15 minutes of, this is like on Sundays, is traditionally when I use it, 15 minutes of work, then 10 minutes of chores. So what was my point in there? Um, oh, so grocery shopping. How does grocery shopping fit in all this, Scoots? Okay, I have no idea why I went on that tangent. I guess I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, so, but so the days I can go grocery shopping, I don't know what it is, but then I suddenly, the resources feel different. Like it would be easier for me to go grocery shopping on Friday, like lunchtime t- between 12 and 3 p.m. Or otherwise Monday between like I, I have a st- some something st- like a standing meeting. So I can't could go at like 3 p.m. But it never ends up I like I don't like emotionally that feels different for me than going on a Sunday or a Saturday. And I don't quite understand why. And so it's an emotional block uh, where I just say I can't emotionally go to the grocery store right now. I'd rather go for a run. I mean, part of it's prioritizing, but come on, it's just time. It's it's malleable, right? So I so this trip I ended up going on a Friday or Sunday at four o'clock, and that was uh, it wasn't like I'm I'm I've definitely grown, so I was able to make the best of it, but. One, they were short on a lot of items. That's what the first item on my list reminded me of that I had to go on a 10-minute tangent about. Two, it was like when sporting games, like Sunday sporting games let out. So there's a lot of families stopping there in in addition to the families that were going there to make sure they had enough food for the school week, right? So it was jamming there. Which was kind of good, and I guess I kind of like it. So I don't know what I'm, um, I'm oh, it was just because they are low-stocked. Uh, so let's get to it then. Holy mackerel. Uh, so the first thing I got, so I needed, it was, and I had it on my, uh, like, my f- phone ongoing shopping list. 
And this happened again later. But so I had it on my phone ongoing shopping list. I said, hey, we need uh, maple syrup because, uh, like, I don't use maple. I probably use maple syrup uh, once every other month, uh, maybe, maybe more than six times a year, but not more than 12 times a year. And maple syrup seems to last a lot, long time. And usually Trader Joe's has a, a varying selection. And they also had a, they had this, something called maple butter, which I still have in my fridge now. Maple butter might be good on something flat, but it's not good on um, waffles. And so what happened this weekend, I didn't realize I was out of maple syrup. I had made waffles for my daughter and I. And then I realized, wait a second, I can't even, like, put, like, I can spread this maple butter on there, but it doesn't really spread because of the crannies, because it doesn't have butter in it. It's just, like, uh, some sort of, uh, like, like, I don't know what it is, uh, but it's it's good, but not for that situation. So I said to myself, uh, you're laughing now, because, you know, 10 minutes from, 10 minutes in, or more, like I said, I need maple syrup. So I went to the maple syrup section. It wasn't my first stop, but it's my first, it's the first thing on the list here because it was a big jug, $16 jug of uh, maple syrup. That was a, like, I really did experience pricing like surprise. But at the same time, I said, well, like, uh, it's a, it's a, the jug is not glass, but it is, uh, so probably, but no sunlight will get in because it's obscured. It looks like a jug you'd have maple syrup in. So it has some sort of, I mean, I didn't think that was an appeal. The price wasn't what almost stopped me from buying it. It was the size of the jug, not humongous by any means, but for someone like me, um, like I said, I don't even know if I have space in my fridge for it, but, uh, so that was my main thing. I said, well, I don't know where we're going to put this man, but I said to myself, okay, it's just easier to buy it now when you know you need it. You know, you're here. It's on your list. Uh, looks like it'll be good. And do you even need to refrigerate it? Then it looked on the refrigerator after opening. Then I said to myself, you haven't opened it yet. So um, and so then I went for it to, 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 to give a short answer. So there you go. That was my first thing on there. What will I use it for? Probably the same things. Uh, um, I guess probably the other thing I'll use it for moving forward is I have a full, um, jar of my, um, of my golden milk powder, which I make a golden milk paste, uh, and I don't have the recipe or my basic outline of how to make it in front of me, so I w- can't. We can't go through it right now. Plus, it'll involve trips to other stores. But I will, like you do, want to sweeten your golden milk paste. And the two best sweeteners to use are honey or maple syrup. So moving forward, I'll probably use maple syrup to flavor that. Maybe I'll put some in my smoothie or something. I don't know. So, yeah, there you go, maple syrup. Uh, and that won't be the last we hear of maple syrup today. Next up, this says uh, HOL Bun Apple Morning. So HOL stands for Holiday Bun Apple Morning. This is actually Danish. I kind of This was another one where I was walking back and forth with a very jerky motion in front of it. And probably making a bit of a display and, and saying, well, should I do it? Should I do it? I mean, you need to know, you know me, but let me reiterate my love of uh, crumbles. And I do like a good Danish, uh, but anything with that coffee cake type crumble, what do they call it? Streusel? Like is, uh, or streusel the like frosting, or is that when they combine the two? So this is kind of like a coffee da- apple Danish. A coffee cake meets an apple Danish. I haven't eaten it yet. As a matter of fact, I looked at it and I said, uh, and I, I thirsted for it. So I put it in the freezer because I said, well, you can have this on the weekend, bud. So, uh, yeah, that's in my freezer. Um, and uh, I'll be having it someday soon. Hopefully it'll f- defrost in a way that makes it uh, good. And I do have new confidence in that happening because of something else on this list. But that could also be a dessert, I, I would think, with like some vanilla ice cream. Uh, even though, it tr- you know, because it could be like an apple, whatever. They like, you know, they could be a dessert. 
Okay, next up, and this I think I talked about, maybe not, this was big on uh, some, like some of the algorithms. I think it was in the Fearless Flyer from August. So if you're a patron and you support the show directly, you heard it there. But it's uh, these mini cheeseburgers. Now I got to be honest with you. So there's three to a box, four forty nine. I don't know how much the sliders of um, at the regular grocery store, the White Castle sliders are. And I didn't open these to look at them. But the the thing people were saying is like they're kind of like the uh, White Castle sliders you can get in the frozen section of a normal grocery store or like White Castle sliders. So I'm looking forward to having those. And I mean, I can't remember what I, what they were if the serving is one or two when I was looking at it. But uh, they'll be handy. Like for, especially for like, let's say, let's say it's like a Saturday and or a Sunday lunch or dinner time. I'm home, I'm flying solo and it's between like going out and get, I don't want to cook. Th- those are perfect. I could have two of those, maybe some beans on the side. So that's something to look forward to. Next up is butter, butter, unsalted butter. Uh, now, which butter, oh, butter, let me count the ways. Uh, a couple of my favorite butters, I just want to throw it out there because we haven't talked about butter in a while. I got top two butters, the song butter, because uh, Bernie loves uh, li- like uh, like uh, boy bands, and so do I. Um, and let me just talk about like a little bit more. Like, So it's a, a BTS song, just in case you haven't listened to it. Might be BTS with somebody or or with somebody with BTS. I can't remember, but it re- like I really like the fact. I know I've talked about. We maybe I talked to you about this. Uh, it it kind of captures this. Uh, it's not an imitation, so it definitely adds some BTS flair, but it has like this Will Smith. Uh, feel to it like almost like in its homage to will smith uh, will smith uh not french fr- not french prince not fresh prince either i'm talking like uh will smith uh after fresh Prince. i mean will smith was probably still on fresh prince but i'm talking like a get jiggy with it or summertime it definitely has a get jiggy with it feel to it uh maybe it's even sampling the song i don't know but i just uh but even even if it's not just sampling the song, it just kind of has a it has a BTS and a Will Smith type kind of structure. So I don't know. I really enjoy it. Uh, and I mean, what better than like when that song was on the charts at the same time as a Willow Smith song? Then you're saying I get like double my Smiths, you know? And then you could listen to Smiths later and triple it. Uh, so, oh, my second, my other favorite butter, you'll have to look this up on YouTube. I don't know how many years ago this was, but, uh, you know, we cover the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I got to say it was probably 2019, if I'm guessing, maybe even 2018. And Al Roker was walking the parade route and a, a person dressed as a stick of butter that was working on the parade and had permission to be there like, uh, but was also interacting with Al in an incredibly humorous way. Not at Al's expense, though. Uh, and I, maybe they got the butter back for the second year, or once butter was will live forever in my mind, like butter and Al. So it was like the kind of thing like where it's like, where's butter? And I would have preferred... Maybe this, and again, I don't know, like, this is where I can't separate truth from the fiction in my mind. That one year they replaced the call to the president or from the president with butter. And they said, we've got butter on the line. So I don't know. Uh, so that's butter. I got the butter because I was running along butter. And I'll probably be baking something or something uh, coming up. Uh Okay, next up is sun-dried tomatoes in oil. Now, Trader Joe's does have two kinds of sun-dried tomatoes, which is great news if you're a sun-dried tomato fan. Like, I could, like I wish I, like, this is part of my goal. Have a few more sun-dried tomatoes. Uh, they have ones in a bag, um, and then they have these ones in oil. Now, 
I did have an issue with the ones in the bag recently, and it was not the Trader Joe's fault. It was my fault. Like, uh, the ones on oil are good in pizza if, you, if you're making your own pizza. The ones in the bag, they don't have any oil, so they tend to burn if you're placing them on top of the pizza. If you're going to put them on pizza, you got to put them under the cheese. And then they'll still be good, and they'll give that punch and zest. Uh, I think that's like an umami, like uh, makes me say umami uh, flavor. It, the one now, the only issue with the ones in the oil, uh, but there is a bonus to this, is that uh, the ones in the oil, um, the oil does solidify in the fridge. So if you, like, and I'm not good at realizing, like I won't realize I have a hankering for sun-dried tomatoes until like i'm like oh boy now i gotta try to figure out how to get like uh how long on room temperature till this oil clears up so the bag one and the bag one is good for uh putting on top a salad but here's the thing as you run low on those uh ones in oil what you can do like once you only have a few left and your oil is down then you can put vinegar in that jar shake the jar up, maybe squirt some mustard or something in there, a couple herbs, uh, and then you have your own, like, jar of sun-dried tomato oil salad and oil and uh, vinegar salad dressing. So that's all. I mean, talk about, like, uh, two-for-one special. And there's, like, so there's Trader Joe's uh, sun-dried tomatoes uh, three ways. And, like, well, uh, on salad, on pizza. And as a dressing within, like, and that's different than being on salad, by the way, or salad two ways. I don't know. Okay, so there we go. Uh, oh, next up, wow, they even call it EVOO, one liter. So they were really, this is extra virgin olive oil. Now, usually, now here, I, I, this is something I'm, like, I'm honestly, I'm not embarrassed about. I'm more dismayed at myself. Uh, I ran out of olive oil, and I don't know how, I still don't know how this is even possible. I mean, it happens to everybody, of course. But so I had bought a, can, you know, large tin, like, uh, of olive oil, where it was an investment uh, at another grocery store. I know, Trader Joe, don't cry, but uh, but it was like a big tin, and and, a, and it had, like, a spout and everything. And then I had a Trader Joe's bottle that has a pouring spout. Uh, and what I would do is use a funnel and top that bottle off. Uh, and so I always had olive oil. And I guess I was under the mistaken impression that that uh, tin was going to last forever. Now, it could be I placed the tin somewhere, but I usually keep it, my olive oil always in the same place in my extra olive oil. Now, on top of that, what happened was the other day when I was prepping dinners, um, and I, uh, trying to think of, I, sh- I guess I would assume I was making, um, roasted Brussels sprouts. I dropped my bottle, the Trader Joe's bottle of olive oil. Now it was such a strong bottle that I actually didn't break or maybe it just, I don't know what, what happened, but the top, like the pouring spout broke, which is made of plastic. But also uh, that when I dropped it, it didn't make a big mess. Cause there was very, I said, Oh my gosh, I'm almost out of olive oil. Anyway, I got to top this off, but I didn't top it off immediately. Cause it already used enough for what I needed it for at that time. Then on Friday, when I went to make pizza, I looked, I said, holy cow. Oh, no, I had enough to make the dough because you you need, uh, I think, two or four grams of uh, olive oil. So I definitely had like four grams of olive oil because I remember adding it because I always go over and put like six to eight by accident. But so um, like uh, that, like when it came time to make the pizza, I like to put some olive oil on the pan um, not, not just for not sticking, but it just adds some flavor, I believe. So that's when I realized I was out of olive oil. It, like I couldn't top this bottle back off. And I said, like, like now normal person, you know, but I cook a lot of food at home and olive oil is one of the primary parts of my cooking process. And I do, ha- I did have some avocado oil. 
but uh, whatever. So I, I said to myself, I'm dismayed. I said, we're really out of olive oil? Holy mackerel. And they said, well, I don't think Trader Joe's sells cans of olive oil, so I have to get some, like, a, like, a, like temporary thing. But also I have to go to another store and get a can of it. Uh, but what happened, so, but, like, I was like, uh, it just ended up in a, a place where I was like, uh, I got to get some olive oil. But that was the other thing, other than there was a run on olive oil and maple syrup at Trader Joe's, or they're just running behind. The shipments. So I had uh, got olive oil. So they did have the regular Trader Joe's uh, extra virgin olive oil, which I haven't used in a while because usually I go for a little bit more. You know, they have a bunch of different ones to choose from. I'm, I'm always getting a big bottle, but they even have a bunch of different big bottles to choose from. I can't think of the names of them right now, but. Uh, but this time I just said, okay, let's get the standard bottle because that's what they have. So we'll see. I think I used it. I used it already. Yeah, I used it last night. Oh, last night. So it's, uh, HelloFresh is back sponsoring the show. So I was making um, HelloFresh uh, taquitos, uh, and so I like sautéed some onions and then uh, some uh, uh, ground beef and uh, yeah. Okay, so that's olive oil. Oh boy. So this is the closest thing you're going to get to a retraction. It's not a full retraction, but uh, this one is HOL, so holiday, which just means seasonal. I guess that's, yeah, they go, HOL stands for seasonal. Interesting. So holiday donuts, apple cider. And I know years ago I had nothing good to say about Trader Joe's donuts and apple, particularly these apple cider donuts. Now, I will claim that my part was I had unrealistic expectations of that, like because at R&R One Stop in Pulaski or Port Ontario, New York, uh, they make not apple cider donuts, but regular donuts with uh, cinnamon sugar. And if you time it right and you get them while they're fresh, uh, they're they're like transcendent, uh, transcendent type thing. And I guess when I first got these, uh, my expectation was that they would at least be similar to those donuts. And that's just not a fair comparison because, one, they're making those donuts fresh right there. Not to order, but, like, they're making them. and, And they have expanded, and they do make them in batch, and you can get them, like, in a bag, and those aren't quite as good. So I'm talking about the ones when I'm on vacation. But, I, like, I don't know, I said to myself, I think probably when I was reviewing those, I said, maybe I should give it one more try. And so I looked, and I saw them, and I took a look at them. I said, well, you look pretty good, Donuts. Uh, maybe I could give you one more try and, and, and temper my expectations. And so I was willing to do that. Now, I also said to myself, uh, when am I going to eat these donuts? Because, again, just like the previous Danish during the week, I'm not going to have something this tasty for breakfast. But I said, well, it's Sunday. You're still on, this is your treat day. So why don't you have a donut after you leave the grocery store as your treat for the day? And then you can put the rest of the donuts in the freezer and eat them on the weekend. And I said, okay, that sounds good. And so then, like, I had made an agreement with myself. Then later, it wasn't actually when I left the store because I didn't have anything to drink. And we see, what are you going to drink with an apple cider donut, right? But it was when I was getting, starting to prep uh, to make dinner that I said, let's have one of these donuts and then we'll put them in the freezer. And I could tell you, the donut was good. Now, it's a little bit denser cake donut. But again, this donut is going through a process where it's made somewhere, frozen, shipped somewhere. Thaw, shipped to the store, thawed, then put on the shelf, uh, and then it comes to my house. And I believe it's not like a donut, like some of the ones at a regular grocery store, it's made to be there for 40 years or whatever. So it, with all that, I, it was a, the only thing I'll say is like it was a little denser than a, like a freshly cooked one, but it was still really good. I mean, I'm not, like, it didn't change my life, but I said it had the right amount of cinnamon sugar, a little bit of crunch to it. I mean, not in the donut, but, you know, the cinnamon sugar way. It was good. 
So that was great. Uh, next up is uh, All for One Liquid Soap. Uh, I think I talked about this before. I guess this was another retraction, like, but not anymore because now I'm a regular user. Whatever this formulation of soap is, I love it. Uh, and I don't ba- and I don't clean myself with it every day uh, because sometimes I use a bar soap. Uh, I don't know why. Don't ask me why. These are strange quirks I have. I say, well, one like uh, I don't know. It's not like based on anything was either. It's like, well, I'm kind of in a hurry. I'll use bar soap. It'll be quicker, or I need a little jolt of uh, some good smelly stuff. Uh, I'll use this uh, body wash. But this is a body wash and shampoo, I believe, and conditioner. Comes in a big pump bottle. And it's really nice. I mean, it really feels to me like lux- like lux- luxurious, uh, like I'm at a fancy hotel. Okay, after that was uh, tortilla roll chili lime things, like taquitos, basically. These were for my daughter. And she, she was uh, like under the weather. I said, tell me some stuff you want. Uh, and this was one of the things she wanted right, right away to help her feel better. So that was for her. Now, we do have a case of missing, a, a bag of missing taquitos from about nine months ago. I think it was last school year, towards the end of the school year. I bought a bag of these, and we've never seen it since then. But I'm pretty sure I left the store with the bag. Like, usually you say, well, I, I probably left it at the store. There's a I guess there's a chance of that, because they did do that recently at another supermarket where I bought a flavor enhancer for water with caffeine so I could do that before my morning run. And I'm pretty sure that fell out of the cart because uh, I didn't want to, I didn't need any bags, uh, but I didn't have any bags either. So it fell out of the bottom of the cart. But the, this bag of taquitos or Trader Joe's rolled chili lime tortillas uh, is still missing somewhere. Like, I don't know if Pillow, maybe Pillow Pet, if you listen to that Pillow Pet episode, Pillow Pet's eating them probably. All right, next up is another HOL, Maple Fudge. This I bought because it looks like um, maple sh- sugar, you know, maple syrup candy. You see that when you uh, visit anywhere associated with Canada, and it's delicious. This is not, this is fudge, so it's not maple syrup candy. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't separate myself from those two things. I said to myself, you don't need this. I said, yeah, I know. And so I, I, I passed on it. Then I re-encountered it two more times. So nice job, Trader Joe's. Uh, and on the third time, I said, but it looks so much like maple syrup candy. It's probably going to be good. Now, I also have a fudge issue, not eating fudge. But that was like something I learned how to do over the holidays last year and we gave out tins of holiday cookies to our neighbors and fudge and i made three kinds of fudge but then i realized like uh i still have like a two or three year supply of eggnog fudge uh gingerbread fudge and chocolate mint fudge the chocolate mint fudge is more of a softer that was the first one i made i didn't have it down yet so I still have, I'll probably have those for the rest of my life. Uh, cause they say like a little fudge will do you. They don't say that, but that's probably the best thing. Uh, but when I was making, I said, well, let, let me double up these batches if I'm giving them away. So I keep giving away that fudge. Uh, that's uh holiday maple fudge. Then, uh, uh, the pasta sauce, the, the vodka cream pasta sauce. We use that for pizza, uh, pizza. That was what we use for pizza topping, but in a pinch you can make, uh, yeah, you can make it, uh, then uh, star fruit, sparkling water back in stock. I don't know how long I only bought an eight pack, uh, but two, my two favorite sparkling waters that they still produce are star fruit and, uh, winter sangria uh they used to have some sort of other one that's called tropical sunshine or i don't know coconut on the beach i've never seen that in like six years and i never thought i would see starfruit or winter sangria again they used to come in the uh, one liter bottles uh 
But a year or two ago, suddenly there they were. I mean, not like in different order. And uh, two of my favorite, definitely my favorite two Trader Joe's water flavors. And I highly recommend either one. Winter Sangria is kind of like a grapey type taste. Uh, and uh, the star fruit, I don't know, it's, it's a kind of like a smarty sweet tart type, barely, like not not overpowering. And I love it. And and I've not found any other place, any other water, like in, in the comparable, you know, sparkling water world that has those two flavors. Now, I have shifted most of my water, I mean, um, my sparkling water consumption over to not, like, because of the, the prices have gone up so much. And it used to be locked into safe, like I'd only get it when it was on special. But now I just cut back on my water and I said, well, these are the flavors I like. Let me just get those. If they're on special, I get them. If not, I'll either drink something else or, but I, I don't just buy, like I'm not just going to buy any old lime because it's on sale anymore. That's what I used to do. You say, I don't know. I'm not sure about, you know whatever this flavor is, but it's not, you know, it's, it's hit that price because it used to be, you try to get under right now, if you hit 30 cents an ounce, like you're doing really good, but you used to try to get, you used to try to shoot for like 24 cents an ounce. Okay. Next up, this one looks really good. It's a holiday baking mix. It's like a cinnamon blondie bar. So kind of like a coffee cake bar mix. Uh, looking forward to that. Oh, then this was Sunday night's dinner for me. My daughter had soup because she wasn't feeling good. And I made, this was a ciabatta demi baguette that I made French red pizza with. And at some point, we'll do a cooking episode where we talk about all the ways you can do pizza at Trader Joe's. uh, Because there's probably going to be like, I I, I don't know, easily five to seven ways we could do it. Uh, Okay, then uh, another holiday baking cookie pumpkin chunk mix. This is another good one. Not as good as the one, of course, they they didn't make it last season, which was a peppermint chunk mix. Uh, but I do remember we've liked these cookies. Uh, and the thing with the pumpkin spice, uh, you know, if my brother's listening, I mean, a spoiler, but uh, I do buy different pumpkin things in pumpkin season to give him his Christmas gifts uh, because he loves pumpkin pie spice flavored stuff okay then we got unsweetened almond milk uh and then grass-fed one what two percent milk uh organic uh oh boy this one i couldn't get last year so i scored it uh caramel apple dipping kit uh they also had the the one um what is it called make your own gingerbread house for trick-or-treating season That was what Koa ate when we moved to this place in 2018. And we were having a holiday. We were going to have a trick-or-treating. My daughter and her friends over to trick-or-treat. And came home and Koa had eaten this the entire gingerbread house. And then we had to call. And then we found out that there was very little. Even though it was like there was not any real chocolate in there. I mean, or a tiny, tiny amount. That was not. So that was good. I mean, it's a go, man. Uh, so I've never bought that again because I just don't want it, you know, her to say, oh, you bought that for me? When do you put it together? I'll eat it later. Uh, okay, so caramel apple dipping kit, though, I didn't get to buy last year, and I wished I did. Then organic strawberry kombucha lemonade, that's for my daughter. Oh, then my daughter requested the sublime Trader Joe's uh, ice cream sandwiches that are a bit like the Nestle Toll House sandwiches, but they're better. And, uh, they're really one of the best things you can buy at Trader Joe's. I mean, as long as you can, as long as you have a daughter to eat them or you're like me and say, okay, I'll, I'll enjoy my sugar-free root beer while you eat this ice cream sandwich. But I am able to do that just cause I can't have, I'm not, I can't have dessert during the week. It's just a reality. Uh, uh, actually, you can with like small, some of the smaller Trader Joe's. I, I, it's easier for me just not to, but like the hold a cone, you could have one of those for sure. But so, uh, but they didn't have those cookie sandwiches. I think they're called Sublime Ice Cream Cookie Sandwiches. So we bought, I bought these Figo ice cream sandwiches, which are 
two kinds of ice cream sandwiches. One is like a, a bit like a Klondike bar on one half, so, so vanilla ice cream dipped in chocolate. And then the other half is like an ice cream sandwich, like a tr- traditional old school ice cream sandwich. And actually, those are in the reasonable range. I think one of them is like a reasonable amount of stuff. It's not that big. And you could enjoy that uh, during the week if, if you like to have a small like uh, treat at the end of the day. Um, and they were, they were, they were good. Uh, they tasted, they tasted good. Uh, okay. Then, um, oh boy, this one though, this is for the weekend. One of the, again, I, I, I think, I don't think I hyped this last time. Maybe I had bought it last time. It's seen it on the algorithms. Thank God for the algorithms. Like sometimes you say, I don't need to know all the stuff that's hyped by people going to these stores to hype stuff, but like, uh, I remember I saw this on one of the things, the algorithm presented it to me, ice cream, celebration cake, gelato, no, celebration cake, gelato. And I said, well, I've been let down before with the cake flavored, uh, just like ice creams. Uh, but so I'll try it. And I tried it and I said, holy cow, like, uh, this is really, really, really good. Nailed it. And I, I, I said, please don't go to the grocery store and buy four pints. Uh, so I didn't do that. Then my daughter had the other half of the pint, uh, and she had like even more, and she's not one to become, um, totally over the, she was like, this is unbelievable. This is like, uh, so strong, like biggest, one of my strongest buys, uh, along with, uh, if that, when they have it, the horchata one is unbelievable too. But if you like cake, like uh, celebrate, you know, confetti cake type uh, thing, it's unbelievable. Okay, then, wow, we really used our time wisely. We're still going through here. So we got a bag of limes, one pound, and they were out of lemons. We've shit, we, I, so far, two weeks straight, no, three weeks straight, maybe? Yeah, I think three weeks in a row we've made lemonade, and we do 50-50. Like when we make the simple syrup, so half sugar, half, uh, you know, imaginary sugar, whatever they call it. And we'll use what we have on hand. So last night, actually, we used some of these limes and the lemons we had left from last week and made some lemon limeade. Week before, straight lemonade. Week before that, it was lemon limeade. And sometimes we'll use like a... um like one of those, what a turbino sugar or whatever that one's called, uh, or whatever, mix it up, but always nice to have. Uh, then, uh, we had, uh, shredded cheese and pepper jack cheese and smoked turkey. So again, can have some turkey and pepper jack sandwiches for lunch. Um, and the shredded cheese is for, uh, dinner um coming up uh probably like tacos uh what else we have here uh what do we got oh uh, how you say this uh, right i always say it wrong and my daughter makes fun of me because she likes to get the bowls but i have moved to a new and again we'll talk about this in another cooking episode down the road but uh have a pretty standard breakfast drink i'm making that uh is kind of like, uh, what do you call that stuff that people, cold, what do they call that, cold oats? Overnight oats. It's a smoothie and overnight oats combined, which is not, I mean, that's not groundbreaking anyway. But I said, let's get some of this ACI to put in there, and uh, I think that'll uh, that'll be cool. Like, I don't know, it's a superfood, it tastes good. Like uh, So we'll see. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, oh, and then I bought also more like frozen because they, oh, the other thing they were out of is berries. Uh, so, um, I mean, they had strawberries, which we'll get to on the list. Uh, so I had to buy frozen berries, uh, which is not, you know, and then the, except my freezer's pretty packed. So that was like a, for, for fresh berries. Then whole milk mozzarella. That was for my, um, French bread pizza. Uh, then, um, cup Brussels sprouts, uh, oh, uh, Trader Joe's chunky guacamole with Greek yogurt. That's going to go with tacos whenever we make those. 
Oh, then a couple um, uh, bars. Is that how much they cost? Uh, that's going to, well, that's going to, re- re- so that'll reassess things. Uh, different, like, uh, what do you call them? Like uh, a bar I'll have instead of a dessert if after I work. Like, so this kind of goes back to this uh, driving to school thing. If there's a situation that comes up with traffic or whatever, I like to have some, like, type, type bars. These ones are uh, barbell bars. They're really tasty, but they I didn't realize how much they cost either. Um, so then my daughter and I can split one of those. Like, if we're in the car and then the traffic's longer, it's like, man, we're not going to make it. Like, it's going to be, dinner's going to be later than we thought. And they taste really good. Or, I mean, it hasn't come up where I'm like, I could use a dessert, but I want something that's not as desserty. Okay, then heirloom mini tomatoes. Can't go wrong with those. Oh, then a succulent in a uh, a nice little, like, uh, uh, like seasonal planter, uh, which is super cute. They have dogs or cats. Uh, then uh, French roast to Trader Joe's ground coffee. Like I said, I, that's one of my go-tos for making coffee. Uh, then mini sweet uh, peppers. Uh, those are good. I've kind of supplement replaced bell peppers with these uh, because you can chop them up for salad, or you could use them in place of what like uh, what you would use bell peppers for. Um. And they, I usually get two weeks out of them, though sometimes some of the bags, they go earlier than that before I can use them all. Then ready veggies I talked about on the last show. Still had the, we had the half a bag of ready veggies with dinner last night. That one was heavy on kale. Then also got a bag of kale, which I use with my smoothies. Uh, then strawberries. Uh, that was another request to my daughter for helping her feel better. And then uh, cucumbers, uh, and then two paper bags. And that was everything from that trip. So not a lot of, um, like, we'll cover the kind of the pizza nine ways or something one day, and then the smoothies, maybe how I make my coffee. I think there was something else. Uh, But, yeah, thanks so much for joining me in another uh, looking at my receipt, uh, checking my receipts uh, and checking what I'm cooking. Uh, So good to see you. I thought I had something else I said I was going to talk about, but uh, now I already forgot. So I'll see you soon. Good night. All right. I want to thank everybody that signed up to support the show directly uh, this week. I want to thank uh, Kristen, Ruth, and Good. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Carla, Leslie, and Lisa. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Emily, Darlene, and Aaron. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Zach, Colin, and Heidi. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. And Allison, Kirsten, and Elizabeth, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, thanks, everybody, who supports the show directly. That's how it exists as a free podcast. So those people that support the show directly or, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, um, no, support our sponsors uh, and spread the word about the sponsors, or you could spread the word about the show uh, by the time you hear this, we'll probably, we may have already started and stopped our referral program. It depends on how it went. Uh, but you could always check that out and see if we're still running it at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. Then you get rewarded for something you want to do already, and it's free. Uh, just spreading the word about the podcast. So thanks so much for that. And, uh, yeah, what do you say? Uh, Scoots comes in here with a talk you in sponsor or talking about something. Uh, and that's how we got those 600 sweet, sweet arc episodes in the archives. And if you're still listening and you're a regular listener, you know, if you use your podcast app, uh, like, uh, like you can create playlists or, or lists of episodes, just you search on YouTube, whatever podcast app you use. Cause every podcast app is different. And you could kind of create a list of your favorites. That's why we work so hard to put those 600 episodes in the feed. Uh, thanks so much. All right, everybody. It's Scoots here talking you in with this month in uh, Sleep With Me Plus uh, audio news. 
Uh, we got a referral program going. If you want to sign up for that, you can always do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. I'm going to run through all the content we put out um, this month on Sleep With Me Plus. If you're still waiting to transition on Patreon to Sleep With Me Plus, you got most of this stuff too. And uh, first, I'm going to start with uh, like the the podcast, the bonus uh, podcast uh, on Sleep With Me Plus. And I'm going to go in reverse. So this Saturday, uh, Posty's got a new series that comes out on uh, uh, every other Saturday, just about. And it's called Welcome to Scooterville. And he's real, people are really excited about this. Those are Posty Super Deluxe episodes. Everybody that supports the show gets those in the bonus feed. And they're really fun. They're really cool and really creative. Uh, some people like listening to them during the day. Some people fall asleep to them. On last Thursday, TNG First Contact Part 2 came out for Boar Friends and Boar Besties. And uh, so it was coverage, two, two, uh, two-part coverage in January and February. Bonus episode covering the Star Trek The Next Generation movie contact, uh, first contact, excuse me. Uh, then Saturday, uh, oh wait, no, I'm, I'm scrolling too fast, sorry. Um, yeah, then Saturday, February 3rd was another Posty Super Deluxe Welcome to Scooterville episode. And, uh, yeah, that was all, everything in the bonus content feed. I think we got one more bonus. Uh, we got, um, some other stuff coming out. All intro, all night episodes. This for, uh, Boar Buds and Boar Besties. Uh, it was deep value. And, uh, uh I don't know what the <laughs> Patreon tiers were anymore. Deep value and ultimate value or something. So we had an all-intro episode come out February 8th. Uh, and Big Farm in the Sky, P.I., all-night episodes, uh, the six episodes 6 or 13. That was part two, six hours and 18 minutes of Big Farm in the Sky, P.I. And then, yeah, this week, uh, another all-intro episode will come out. Another all-intro episode came out on uh, February, January 26th or 28th. I can't read that. Okay, and then the story only feed and the ad free feed on Sleep With Me Plus. You know the the story only episodes and the um, ad free full episodes come out on the same day. So if you're a story only listener, you get those on the same day. Or if you're like let you know making playlists. Um, so let's see. Those are two separate podcasts on Sleep With Me Plus, um, but same content. Uh, just. Uh, the story only versions have no, well, obviously no ads, no theme music, no uh, jingle music, and no thank yous at the end and no intros, just the story only portion of the episode. Okay, so Sunday, 1239, Dessert Week, that was Great British Bake Off, episode six. Wednesday was Pup Pup Prodigy, our new series, Multiplex, episode one. Uh, February 11th was Wandering Towers, a board game unboxing. There's 1,253 episodes in this feed right now. Um, sorry, I went off topic there. February 7th was, uh, Tapestry, which was for Va- Va- Valentine's Day in the public feed. And that was, um, a TNG, re- like a, like a repeat of a TNG episode 560. February 4th, Roaring Twenties, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, uh, Episode 5, that's Season 10, Collection 7, uh, 12.35, January 31st, uh, was uh, Notebooks of the Journey into the World of Friends. That was a series review, we kind of look at the making of that series. January 28th was uh, Romancing the Stone, Tell the Tape, uh, in anticipation of Argyle. Uh, which you still haven't seen yet. Uh, that was, uh, and then uh, January 24th was Dairy Week, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, Season 10, Collection 7, Episode 4. And you can also see kind of we stick at the same kind of rhythm uh, for the most part of uh, a kind of random Trending Tuesday style episode that could be anything, the board game unboxing, tell the tape, uh, personal essay. Then um, we do uh, the written series. So we finished up Journey to World of Friends. Now we're starting Multiplex. 
Then a TV show recap uh, with Great Great British Bake Off. And uh, yeah, what else? Uh, I think that's everything. What I record this week? Great question. This ended up being the week of Bring It On, uh, the cheerleading movie from 2000, by kind of by accident. Well, not even kind of by accident, totally by, like, uh, I did an episode I thought was going to be about Crayola crayons. Ended up kind of, I'm trying to imagine if there was a role-playing game based on the film that I'd never seen Bring It On, even though I quote the trailer all the time on this podcast. Then I watched over two episodes, uh, bring it on, on mute, uh, and like kind of recorded, kind of like a TV recap episode. And, um, those, uh, like with, with some kind of like, well, I rented the movie. So two out of two, two, one and a half episodes have good quality close captioning. But then my uh, rental ran out when I like I, I broke up the second episode into two parts. So the final uh, twenty five minutes of the show, the movie, I didn't have the best closed captioning. Even though it was mostly action based, it was like the championship. But yeah, I'd never seen. I still never saw it. it's already been brought. And but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll look up the trailer later today just to see. And those will come out, I don't know, right now it's in February. I don't know, those will come out March or April. And those will probably come out as TV recaps because we're still recovering, honestly, from the strike. And I'm still a little, um, you know, all the Great British Bake Off episodes we recorded before the strike. Uh, and so I'm still easing my way back into figuring out what our future of uh, TV recap style episodes is. So we have some interim content right now. As I kind of uh, see what I'm comfortable with uh, and is sustainable for the long term of the podcast. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll go from there. And uh, um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I'm uh, glad you're all here. And uh, if you ever want to support the show directly, trying to put these at the end of the public episodes um, just as an experiment so you can kind of get a better idea. Still a sleepy voice. But yeah, if you ever want to check out a seven-day trial at Sleep With Me Plus, it is a huge way to support all the work that goes into the show and make sure the podcast stays sustainable so that you can, you can rely on it and a ton of other people can rely on it. Um, and uh, yeah, you can do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Uh, and then let me know what you think uh, or, or tell me so I can say thank you. Uh, thanks so much and good night.